I never thought I'd find myself in a situation like this. But here I am, reliving every goddamn moment, and wishing I could forget. It's like a bad movie I can't turn off. The kind that burrows into your brain, and, no matter how hard you try, it just won't leave. I should have known better. Urban legends are called that for a reason, but we were stupid, naive, and maybe just a little too curious. It was the night before Halloween when the air felt electric, charged with whispers of things that go bump in the night. My friends and I, Rachel, Ben, and Ava, decided to dig up a legend that had been buried in our town for decades. They called it, The Whispering Woods. The story went that if you stood beneath the old oak tree at midnight and whispered the name of a lost child, they would appear, desperate for help. But no one ever really came back after doing it. We thought it'd be fun. Just a stupid little adventure to liven up our weekend. I mean, who wouldn't want a thrill, right? So, armed with flashlights and way too much bravado, we made our way to the woods. The first half hour was all laughter and teasing, the kind of camaraderie that comes with being young and reckless. We trekked down a dirt path, the kind where shadows danced between the trees. The moon hung low, casting a silver glow that made the whole place feel. Well, magical. But the deeper we went, the quieter it got. The kind of quiet that presses on your ears, making you feel like something's watching. Like the woods themselves were holding their breath. Are you sure we're going the right way? Ava asked, her voice breaking the silence, though it came out more like a squeak. I mean, I don't want to be lost out here. Relax, Ava, Ben said, puffing out his chest like he was the king of the woods. It's just a little farther. Just need to find that stupid tree. I tried to ignore the unease creeping into my gut, the way the trees seemed to lean closer, almost like they were eavesdropping on us. Maybe we should turn back, I suggested, but no one was listening. We pressed on, deeper and deeper, until we finally found it. The old oak stood tall and gnarled, its branches stretching out like skeletal hands. This is it, Rachel declared, her eyes wide with excitement. Let's do it. I hesitated, a knot tightening in my stomach. Are we really going to go through with this? Come on. It'll be fun. Just a silly little legend, Ben said, but even he seemed a little too eager, his eyes shining with something darker. We all gathered around the tree, the chill of the night sinking into our bones. I could feel the tension in the air, like something was about to snap. Okay, who's going to do it? Rachel asked, looking at each of us. I'll go, Ben said, stepping forward. What's the worst that could happen? He grinned, but it didn't reach his eyes. Just. Say the name, I stammered, feeling the weight of the moment. That's all we have to do. Right, Ben said, and he closed his eyes, taking a deep breath. Little Jenny, if you're out there, we're here to help you. He opened his eyes, looking at us, then at the tree, and we all stood there, waiting. But then, nothing. Just the sound of leaves rustling in the wind. The silence stretched, thick and heavy, until it was almost suffocating. I was about to say something when I heard it. A faint whisper, so soft it was almost lost in the breeze. Then. My heart stopped. It was so faint, like a child's voice carried on the wind. Did you hear that? I whispered, looking around, my skin crawling. Yeah, Ava said, her voice trembling. What was that? Just. The wind, Ben said, but there was an edge of uncertainty in his voice now. Let's do it again. No. This is stupid, I said, but he was already turning back to the tree, determination etched on his face. Jenny, we want to help you, he shouted. Show yourself. And then it happened. A gust of wind whipped through the clearing, cold and sharp, and for a moment, I thought I saw something flicker just out of the corner of my eye. A small figure, pale and translucent, hovering by the tree. 
my breath hitched in my throat. Ben, stop. Let's go. I shouted, but it was too late. The whispers grew louder, swirling around us, filling my head with chaos. Ben. Help me. He stepped closer, completely entranced. What do you need, he called out, and suddenly, the ground beneath us trembled. The air thickened, and the tree creaked ominously, its branches snapping like fingers grasping at the air. Run. Rachel screamed, and we all turned, panic kicking in. But it was like the woods themselves had come alive, twisting and turning, blocking our path. The whispers grew into a chorus of screams, echoing all around us. Help me. Help us. The sound clawed at my ears, drowning out everything else, making it impossible to think. Ben. Ava cried, reaching for him, but he was already stepping back toward the tree, mesmerized by whatever horror lay hidden there. Ben, don't. I shouted, trying to pull him back, but he just kept going, moving deeper into the shadow of the oak. The whispers coiled around him, wrapping tighter and tighter, pulling him away from us. No. Don't go. Please. I stammered, feeling tears prick my eyes, panic bubbling in my chest. But he was lost, drifting further and further into the dark. The ground shook violently, and the shadows twisted into shapes, grotesque and unnatural. I could barely breathe, my heart racing, as I yanked at Ben's arm, but it was like he was made of stone. Ben. Rachel screamed, but it felt futile. The darkness wrapped around us, pulling us into its depths, and I felt myself slipping away, too. Then everything went black. I don't know how long I was out. When I came to, I was alone in the woods, the night eerily still. I could barely remember what had happened. I stumbled through the darkness, calling out for Ben, for Ava, for Rachel. But only the wind answered me, carrying their voices away like smoke. I ran, tripping over roots, pushing through the underbrush until I finally broke free from the trees and onto the road. My lungs burned, and my legs ached, but I didn't stop. I couldn't. I collapsed on the asphalt, gasping for breath, and eventually, a car pulled up. The driver looked horrified, calling for help, but all I could do was cry. When they finally got me to the hospital, I tried to explain. I told them about the whispers, about the tree, about Ben and Rachel and Ava, but they just stared at me like I was insane. No one believed me. The police searched the woods, but they never found them. Not even a trace. They said I was just traumatized, that I must have imagined it all. But I know what I saw. I know what I heard. And I know I'm not alone. Now, I can't sleep. When the wind blows through my window at night, it carries their whispers, echoing in my mind. Help us, find us. So I'm telling this story, hoping maybe someone out there will believe me. Just, if you hear the legend of the whispering woods, don't go looking for it. Don't even think about it. Because some legends are better left buried. And if you hear whispers in the wind, just run. Because what they want is not help, it's something much worse. And once you're in, there's no coming back. Not really.